Welcome to part one of three in my skateboard series. Both this video and the next will cover the construction of my electric skateboard. It cost me roughly a third the price of a boosted board, it has multiple times more power and twice the top speed, and it has more than three times the range. In my opinion at least, it looks a hell of a lot cooler too. I began with a portion of steel box and placed the VEOC and the BMS and the battery within the limits of the steel box so that I could mark how much steel I would need to cut off um, to properly fit the electronics. I then cut the angles with an angle grinder and the next step was to mark the holes required for the motor wires and the coolant lines on the steel casing uh, which I then drilled out with a drill press. I didn't have drill bits large enough to drill the holes I required so I actually used a step drill to enlarge the holes for both the motor wires and the coolant lines. The next step in the manufacture of the box was to install the bottom slash front plate. So I marked the lines I needed and the angles and I partially cut through the plate to make it easy to bend. After I bent the plate to the required specifications, I did a full weld on the back. I did some partial welds in the corners on the inside of the box. Uh, I welded the parts I cut to make the angles and I did a full weld on the two front corners. I probably, well no not probably, I definitely overdid it with this one. After I welded the steel plate I made some custom bracketry uh, to hold the metal box to the skateboard using four M6 bolts and I also made some bracketry for the radiator mounts so I basically got some tubing, welded it on and I welded on some nuts that would fit the bolts that I would use for the radiator. So the next step was paint. I didn't put a huge amount of care into this. Um, I chose to use what I had lying around, which in this case was Pour 15, which is a paint you can use directly over top of rusty surfaces. Uh, it's a little expensive and definitely overkill for this project, but it would do a nice job of hiding all the imperfections and at the end of the day for very little surface prep basically just me wiping down the box with lacquer thinner I actually ended up with a pretty shiny finished project that I would say actually didn't look half bad and the uh, last part um, for paint of course was I had to sand it down and apply the second coat just to get all those little surface imperfections out and to make sure it was nice and thick and durable and as for the inside, I could have left it unpainted, however I chose to uh, just put on a layer of spray bomb just to make sure that if any moisture somehow got in there that it wouldn't rust or... So one of the steps that I actually forgot in fabrication was to uh, drill and tap some holes for the hose clamps that would hold on to the water hose as it would exit from the front of the box and head to the rear for the radiator. So I drilled them and tapped them out to be M3 and the hose clamps are simple electrical cable hose clamps with some stainless M3 bolts. To finish off the box I installed all the fittings including the PVC strain relief fitting which I actually had to chop to make sure that it wouldn't stick into the box too much and the grommets to hold the water cooling lines and the charge port. In this part I'm actually going to move into the electrical section. I'm not going to talk about every individual step. I will put title cards on the screen so you can see what step I'm doing. However, just for a couple minutes I think I'm going to talk about what batteries and electronics I used and why. Originally when I started with this project, I began from my choice of motor. I used a Turnigy Trackstar T28780KV motor. Um, this was not a good choice, but it was what I had lying around. The recommended controller for the motor actually ran the motor at a peak of 7,000 watts, so I knew the motor was capable of a lot. Um, the problem 
that made this motor not a good choice was the winding. At 780 kV, or 780 RPM per volt, the motor spins up to about 18,000 RPM. This is much too much for the skateboard to use, and under full speed, I still only reach half the max RPM. So therefore the motor has to apply more torque than what be otherwise required. Um, to compensate for this, I used a very steep gear reduction, as steep as I could, but ideally you would cho choose a motor around 280 kV. And also, because of the large power output of the motor and the high, or relatively high kV, it requires 200 phase amps to get the maximum um, recommended torque out of the motor which is a lot, a lot more than most controllers are capable of. The next major component I bought was the battery. Now you've kind of seen this already and you've probably realized that it's quite large. I originally discovered it as a very affordable battery on J. Hugh Garcia's channel. He's a battery YouTuber and he has a link to a list of affordable batteries for hobbyists that he keeps. But I found it, and it only cost me about $150 at the time, um, that's Canadian, or about $120 US dollars, uh, which considering the specifications was very cheap. They rated it for, I believe, a 10C discharge, which means that considering its capacity of 25 amp hours, it could provide 250 amps, which was thousands and thousands of watts. So no problems on the discharge side of things, the battery never gets warm. And the capacity at 25 amp hours and 8 cells is 740 watt hours, which is a lot, especially for the price. It was a really good deal. Um, now just for reference, the standard model boosted board holds 100 watt hours and the extended range model, with about 14 miles of range, holds 200 watt hours. So clearly this battery is many times larger than normal. Now this gives excellent range and good performance, and it would go further than you'd ever need to or want to ride on a skateboard, but the board's heavy and it's large. And the, But the price was good, and the price was the number one consideration at the time. So I needed a BMS to protect the battery from short circuits, over voltage, under voltage, uh, to balance the battery, and to act as an electronic switch, which I can control with my mobile phone. Uh, for this job, I love to use the smart BMSs, uh, typically found on AliExpress. They give all the features I want, um, probably the most important of which is allowing it to charge at 4.1 volts per cell instead of 4.2, as this can actually double or even increase the lifespan more on a lithium pack. Now, as for the battery's weight, I decided to save a little bit of size just by shaving off a cell, so down to a 7S pack. Now for the controller, I actually tried using hobby controllers. It's a terrible idea, don't do it, they blow up, they suck. Instead, use a VESC. They're specifically designed for skateboards, and they're very programmable. Now, you can actually blow them up if you don't know what you're doing. However, in my next video, I'm going to go over that, so if you ever decide to do this project, you can do it without blowing up your VESC. But when they work, they work great. So this concludes this part of the project. Stay tuned for the next video when I go over making the skateboard, making the motor mount, putting everything together, and programming the VESC. I'll have it out on 2 p.m. Central Time on July 31st, or Wednesday in two weeks. If you enjoyed my video, please like and share. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. Subscribe for future content, especially related to this project. If you're interested in the products I used, uh, check the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.